Today we're going to talk about uh, some basic beef cattle genetics and then we'll follow it up uh, with a discussion on crossbreeding and breeding systems as well uh, as we look at uh, this next lecture. So if we look at basic beef cattle genetics, uh, I think uh, we're not going to make you, you know, molecular genetics, uh, geneticists or animal breeders uh, by taking this class. You probably already maybe had uh, a, this, a class similar to that or had some experience, but we just want to kind of give you some of the basic inheritance, just some little bit of basic genetics so you can think about as we begin to select breeds and as you look at color patterns and those types of things, well, how do these animals inherit and, and how do we end up when we breed a Hereford to a, a, a red Angus, how do we end up with a red Baldy? And so, so we want to give you some, just some background first. So the basic unit of, of inheritance is the gene and it's located on a chromosome which are made up of strands of complex molecules that we call DNA. And so we've all heard about DNA and we've watched enough crime shows and so on. So cattle have 30 pairs of chromosomes and each parent contributes a chromosome to form the pairs. And so uh, I, I received uh, half of my uh, genetic information from my mother and I received half of that from my father. And it's the same thing when we're talking about uh, mating cattle, we're going to get half from the bull and half from the cow uh, to produce a calf. And, uh, and so that's why a lot of times our ranchers, when we talk about bulls, and we'll hit on this a little bit later, how valuable that bull is because they do make a big impact because one, we're, we're breeding him to the cow to get half the calf, but we're also mating that, that bull in a typical commercial operation. They're going to be mating about 25 cows. So they can have an impact not only on one cow, but as many as, one calf, but as many as 25 calves. Uh, so these current chromosomes contain about 60,000 genes, uh, which the entire set is called our, our genome there. And so when the progeny are created by the union of the gametes, which is the sperm from the male and the egg from the female, each gamete will produce an individual uh, that is unique, uh, and, and these patterns and inheritance depend on several things. And so when we say an individual is unique, they are unique. Uh, and we're going to talk about environmental influences and those types of things here in just a minute. Uh, but these gametes are produced by the parents, uh, and there's lots of possible combination of these gametes across the genes and so on. Uh, and the action of different alleles uh, as well is what we have to think about. So. Uh, genetics is very complicated on the simple fashion. To, we're going to talk more on color inheritance and those types of things, but when we get into some of these other traits, it becomes a little more complicated uh, because of the interactions there. So different forms of the same gene, so maybe it's the, the gene for uh, background color in cattle, whether they're red or black, uh, the different forms, either red or black, uh, of that same gene that cause that inheritance uh, are called alleles. Uh, and the combination of these genes at a particular location of a, ge of a gene on a chromosome is called the genotype. So if an individual's, an individual's two alleles, one from each parent, are the same, so maybe both of them are the red variation of the background color gene, uh, if they inherit both of those, they're going to be homozygous for that. So if they inherit different and it could be color, it could be a, a genetic defect, and we're seeing that in these cattle. Uh, if they inherit a, uh, two different versions of that gene, we call those individuals heterozygous. Uh, the other thing is we look at uh, phenotype, and so what can be seen or measured is called the phenotype of an animal. So it could be as simple as a red color or roaning or, or solid white because of the diluter gene in cattle. Uh, or the roaning gene, but it also is also when we think about uh, marbling and weaning weights and yearling weights, that's ultimately the phenotype of that animal there. And so if we look at types of genetic variation, so we've got first one is additive. So each contributing gene adds to the phenotype independently. So the effects of a single gene are small, but they accumulate over time and there's continuous variation in the phenotype. And so traits of economic performance are usually additive. Uh, and these additive traits are generally influenced by the environment as well as genetically. And they can be transmitted from parent to offspring. And so seed stock producers uh, market breeding potential. Uh, so the breeding for value of maybe a bull 
is their primary concern. And then we also have the non-additive. And so this is the part of the genotype that depends on genes acting in combination with other genes. And it becomes a little more confusing then and sometimes a little harder to predict. And they are generally not influenced by the environment. And they cannot be transmitted, these combinations can't be transmitted from parent to offspring because the parent's going to provide some of the genetics, but they're not going to be uh, providing this non-additive. Uh, and it's res responsible for the heterosis or hybrid vigor, which we will discuss later. So commercial producers market performance. And to the degree that the gene combination value contributes to the performance, uh, and so gene combination values, really, it's, it's important for them. And so that's why we see on our commercial side, we see producers that, that really look into, uh, they want the non-additive version, so they're looking at hybrid vigor and, and heterosis in that. Uh, different, different types of inheritance, one qualitative, so one pair of relatively few alleles generally involved. The traits have distinct differences in phenotype, such as horns, color, et cetera. Uh, and they're usually not influenced by the environment. So whether or not an animal's red or black is really not going to be influenced by maybe some environmental effects uh, uh, after they're born or even uh, right after conception there. And then the quantitative, so there's many pairs of the genes involved and acting additively. And so there's continuous variation in the phenotypes. And virtually all of the economically important traits result from this type of inheritance. And so whether it be reproductive performance or weaning weight or whatever it may be, and these two can be influenced by the environment. So we can have uh, animals that are maybe clones, uh, but, but we know that if we treat one differently than the other and one gets more feed than the other, we're, uh, performance is going to be different. And so with that. Uh, and so again, just to, to reiterate, when we're looking at quality, qualitative inheritance, there's different forms of the same gene, they're called alleles. If an individual's two alleles are the same, so one from each parent is the same, then they're homozygous. But if they're different, they're going to be heterozygous. So let's look at just some simple color inheritance here. And so we've got this particular bull, uh, an Angus bull, and you can see it's black, and so its background color is black. And, uh, and uh, with that, we're going to call this bull, we know that he is homozygous for black uh, background color. So he's biggie, biggie. Whereas this red Angus is going to be, uh, carry the recessive red gene, which is littley, littley in the background color. Now, if we had this particular animal was heterozygous, biggie, littley, so carried the red gene, we know that black is dominant, so he would be black. But we're going to assume that this one is solid black. So here's little e, little e. And again, if we had a big E, uh, we had a black gene and a red gene, the animal's going to come out black every time. Brangus is an example. We've got uh, this bull right here. Uh, we would assume within the Brangus, black Brangus breed, that they're going to be homozygous for big E, big E. Now, if we breed this Angus, bull to this red Angus cow and uh, we know that the red Brangus is going to be homozygous, uh, we're going to always get black calves because one genes, one variation is going to come from the bull and one from the cow. So each is going to contribute, one's going to contribute the big E or the dominant gene, the black, the cow's going to, uh, to uh, give the red and black is always dominant. So uh, if you've got a homozygous black bull and you breed it to a red animal, you're always going to get black, uh, black hided animal. But if it's big E lily, if it's heterozygous, uh, there is going to be a, uh, a chance that, 50% uh, chance, if you breed that, that black heterozygous bull to the red, heter red homozygous cow, you're going to end up with a 50% chance that, that the calves will be red. So half the calves on average will be red, half will be black uh, with that. So when we're determining the best animal, so that gives you a little bit on inheritance and some simple inheritance there with, with respect to color. Uh, when describing animals, we usually characterize them in terms of appearance or performance or a combination. So 
the look of the animal, maybe an animal uh, is uh, it's deeper bodied or maybe is red or black. But we also look at them in the form of performance because in reality, in the commercial cow-calf business, we get paid for pounds of beef uh, in there. So we're trying to produce more product and weight is important. Uh, and so we, we always, we look at heavily in selecting our animals, we're looking at uh, those animals that maybe have higher weaning or, or yearling weights, or maybe we're focusing on lower birth weight cattle as well. Uh, so traits are observable and measurable characteristic of an animal. So uh, a trait may be weaning weight or yearling weight, uh, whatever it may be. Um, and phenotype is the observed category or measured level of performance. So again, we talked about it could be either red or black, it could be large frame, it could be uh, a weaning weight, yearling weight, marbling, whatever it may be. Uh, genotype is the genetic makeup of the animal. So uh, what, what the genes are telling us about that animal. Now, if we look at it and ask this question, does, genotype, does phenotype equal genotype? Uh, no, not necessarily. And so as we look at, we've got to think about the environmental effect. Uh, that goes into the picture because we can have genetically the best animal but if the environmental effects are too negative we may not end up with the best animal, best animal expressing phenotype. And so the environmental effect is the effect that external or non-genetic factors have on animal performance. Uh, thus phenotype equals genotype plus the environmental effects. Uh, now a lot of times we think about the environmental effects or things that happen after that animal is born and placed into the environment. But we also have to think about uh, now new data is looking at, well, there, there may be fetal programming, there's, there's influences in utero that can occur uh, uh, prior to that animal being born, and now there's even more uh, information out there that uh, is, is showing that maybe even a bull that uh, environmental effects can influence the, the genetic makeup of the sperm and the traits that are passed on in this form of the gamete there. And so there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon that we maybe have never thought about before, but uh, now in the form of nutrition and other environmental things, we may be thinking all the way back to the development of those animals uh, prior to them even reaching puberty before we begin to mate them. So those are some exciting things. So, Phenotype is equal to the genotype plus the environmental effects of that. Again, it can be after birth, uh, and, it, and now we're beginning to see things uh, occur well before uh, conception uh, of that animal as well. So that, that's the exciting and interesting thing from the, from the genetic standpoint.